All right, so we've successfully installed the Anaconda distribution. And as I mentioned, one of the programs that comes bundled with Anaconda is Jupyter Notebook, which will serve as our integrated development environment. So in this next series of lessons, I wanted to focus on familiarizing ourselves with the notebook, including practicing some regular code execution. And we'll follow that up with a quick review of Python, or at least a reminder of some of its data types, just to get us uh, kind of all on the same page before we start diving into Pandas itself. So I'm navigated to my Pandas folder on my desktop where I have uh, unpacked all of my CSV files. Again, the folder or directory that you choose does not have to be on your desktop. Just make sure that wherever it is you've unpacked all of your CSV files. Make sure that that's the same directory where you're creating these Jupyter Notebooks. That will just ensure that things like file references and CSV references uh, are easy. You don't have to navigate to certain directories. They're all just right here and ready to go. So now that I'm navigated in the proper directory, I'm going to click New here on the top right and select my Conda root environment. And that's going to launch a new Python Jupyter Notebook. As a reminder, Conda root is the default um, environment. Rather, root is the environment. Um, and basically, an environment is just a sandbox, and that's where we have our installation of Python. So in order to give this notebook a name, I can click on Untitled up above and give it a new name. I'm just going to call it Jupyter Notebook. Press Enter. And if I navigate back to my navigator view, you can see that the notebook has appeared right here. We can see it has a dot IPY and B extension. So as soon as we create it, it automatically appears here from our list. If we ever come back and want to open it, we can just click it here. So we have that five letter extension. As I mentioned, the old deprecated name for this was called IPython Notebooks. That's where that extension comes from. You might see both terms used interchangeably online or throughout this course. Basically means the same thing. Um, so these things are called cells. Uh, as I mentioned, you can put valid Python code in here. Um, and for example, I can do something basic like arithmetic. So if I put 1 plus 1, if I put this in here, I can execute the cell by holding my Shift key and pressing Enter. And when I press Shift Enter on the cell, that's the last cell in that case of a notebook, it's going to execute it and also create a brand new cell below for me to work with. Once, I, once I've committed any changes and I want to save it, it's as simple as just pressing the shortcut, which is a Command S on a Mac or Control S on a computer. You can also, or a Windows rather, and you can always just click File and Save and Checkpoint. That saves it as well. Uh, just a few options here in regards to the interface here, and then we'll actually dive into more of the cell execution in the next lesson. Uh, we have a few options available here in the View menu. The Toggle Header option will remove that top header, which shows you the name of the notebook. We also have the toolbar, which is this thing below. That's just a couple of uh, shortcuts that you can click on. If you familiarize yourselves with the keyboard shortcuts, you generally won't have to use the toolbar. Some people prefer this look. It's kind of minimalistic and reduces a lot of the uh, stuff on screen. I generally prefer to have both the header and toolbar present, get the full presentation. Uh, you'll also see this kernel option. A kernel is basically it refers to the server that's running currently and kind of returning things to you. When you when you execute a cell, something has to process that one plus one and that's the server and it's responding to you with a two. So if you ever run into any kind of issues, something like you know a cell is frozen or the notebook appears to freeze, what you want to do is go to this kernel option and select restart. Yeah, of course there's a bunch of options available here. You can restart. Uh, you can restart and clear all the cell output that currently exists. So if I do this for example right now, you'll see the two is going to uh, disappear once I click this red button. You can see the two has disappeared and we're back to our fresh uh, original look. But basically it just restarts the server and, and kind of dumps everything from memory. So if you're ever running into issues and you don't want to kind of exit everything and start from scratch, you can always just try running that kernel command. Uh, usually that's my most common one. If you also want to restart the kernel and run all the cells that you already have, so maybe you had something like a, a bad cell, maybe you created an infinite loop and you, you were able to remove it but the notebook is still lagging or running as an error, you can remove that cell and click restart and run all. It'll restart the server and execute all of those cells for you. Um, in addition, just uh, it's worth playing around, just exploring a couple of these options. The last one that I want to just show you is the edit menu. Here you see a lot of kind of the common uh, copy-paste functionalities that are available in things like a word processing program. You can cut cells, copy cells, uh, merge cells, and things like that. Um, I'll go into some of the popular keyboard shortcuts that I use, but keep in mind if you ever want to do things kind of on the outer level of moving things around or copying or pasting them, take a look at the edit menu that will offer you 
a bunch of options. So that's just a quick introduction to the visual interface of Jupyter Notebook. And in the next lesson, I'll start talking a little bit about executing cells. We already did one example here, and we'll continue with that in the next lesson.